When buying and selling real estate, the buyer and the seller will enter into a contract to set out the terms and conditions on which the purchase and sale will take place. These terms include the following, the purchase price, the specifics of the property, conditions that must be satisfied or waived, the dates when the purchase and sale will complete, and any other relevant terms to the transaction. Developed by the BC Real Estate Association and the Canadian Bar Association, the contract of purchase and sale helps realtors and consumers work through the process of preparing a contract for the purchase and sale of a particular property. The contract of purchase and sale standardizes the most common terms of a real estate transaction and provides a familiar format for buyers and sellers while still allowing for flexibility with respect to unique terms. This video provides essential information to help you understand the contract of purchase and sale. When does the process begin and when is the contract of purchase and sale used? The process begins with negotiation of the contract terms, which typically starts when a buyer makes an offer to the seller to purchase the property. Usually, the buyer's realtor prepares an offer on behalf of the buyer using the contract of purchase and sale, and once signed by the buyer, it is presented to the seller. What information is included on the contract of purchase and sale? The contract of purchase and sale will include basic information about the buyer, the seller, and the property. It will also include the purchase price being offered by the buyer, whether there is a deposit being paid, how much that deposit is, and who will hold that deposit. It also includes the date and the time that the offer expires. This period may be days or hours. The right amount of time will be determined by the buyer, with market conditions and other factors in mind. In addition to this information, Buyers sometimes request that their offer is contingent on certain terms and conditions, such as obtaining satisfactory financing and or completing and approving a home inspection. What if the offer is not accepted? During negotiations, if a party does not agree to the terms presented to them, they may choose to alter the terms and present a counteroffer back to the other party. The parties may continue to exchange counteroffers until the parties either reach an agreement or the offer expires. If the parties do not reach an agreement or the offer expires, a binding contract will not be formed and neither party will have any obligation to the other. What happens when the offer is accepted? If the parties reach an agreement, a binding contract is formed and the parties must carry out their respective obligations contained in the contract of purchase and sale. What do the terms in the contract mean? And what do I need to know to be prepared to make an offer to buy or to accept an offer to sell a property? It is important that all parties to the contract of purchase and sale are aware of its terms and conditions so that they know what their obligations are and can carry them out. Now we'll describe in more detail some of the important terms contained in the contract of purchase and sale. Purchase price. The purchase price is the final price that both the buyer and seller agree on when the offer is accepted. This is the amount the buyer is willing to pay for the property. During negotiations, the price may change as counteroffers are exchanged between the parties. Typically, these changes are shown on the contract of purchase and sale by marking up the document and the buyer and seller would put their initials to show their agreement. This process will continue until the parties agree on the final purchase price or the offer expires or is withdrawn. Deposit. The deposit being offered is the amount of money presented to show the buyer's good faith commitment to complete the purchase. The deposit will be applied towards payment of the purchase price on closing. The deposit may, in some cases, be applied towards any damages if the buyer fails to complete their obligations under the contract of purchase and sale. Generally, the deposit for the purchase of a residential property in British Columbia is between 5 to 10 percent of the purchase price. The contract of purchase and sale provides that the deposit is due within 24 hours of acceptance of an offer, unless otherwise agreed to by all parties. Terms and Conditions Most transactions have unique terms and conditions that must be documented. This section of the contract of purchase and sale is used to include those terms and conditions. Some conditions will provide that they are for the benefit of one party and may need to be satisfied or waived in order for the transaction to complete. Examples of such conditions may include the buyer obtaining financing, reviewing and approving an insurance quote, a property inspection, reviewing and approving the title for the property, reviewing strata documents if applicable, and obtaining legal and or professional advice. This section may also include 
known information, facts and commitments about the condition or status of the property. The contract of purchase and sale is an agreement between the buyer and the seller and should include all terms of the agreement between the buyer and the seller regarding the transfer of the property. Terms that are not included in the contract will likely not be binding on the parties. Matters that are not between these parties may best be documented outside the contract of purchase and sale. Completion, Possession and Adjustment Dates These sections set out the timeline for the transaction. The key dates include the completion, possession and the adjustment dates which are agreed to by the buyer and the seller when they enter into the contract of purchase and sale. Completion Date The completion date is the date when the buyer's money is paid to the seller and the ownership of the property transfers to the buyer. Possession Date the possession date is the date that the buyer is entitled to take possession of the property. In other words, when the buyer gets the keys to the property and is allowed to move in. This date is often the day after the completion, but it can be any date agreed to by the buyer and the seller. The contract of purchase and sale will specify the type of possession that the buyer will get on the possession date. For example, the buyer could receive vacant possession or if there are tenants in the property, the contract of purchase and sale may specify that the tenants will remain in the property. Adjustment Date The adjustment date is the day that the buyer assumes and becomes responsible for the costs of the property, such as taxes, utilities, and assessments, and becomes entitled to the benefits of the property, such as rents. To reflect the change of responsibilities and benefits related to the property, the total money paid by the buyer to the seller on the completion date will be calculated so that each party is credited for its fair share. This final amount will be determined as of the adjustment date. The adjustment date is typically the same date as possession. Fixtures and chattels. This section lists the items that are to be included and excluded as part of the purchase and sale. There are two classifications of items. Fixtures and Chattels Fixtures are generally objects or improvements made to a property that are attached, physically affixed to the property, or cannot be removed easily without causing damage. Hot water tanks, built-in cabinets, lights and flooring are examples of fixtures. The contract of purchase and sale provides that fixtures are included in the purchase and sale of the property unless they are specifically excluded in the agreement. Chattels are movable items of personal property and must specifically be listed in the offer if they are to be part of the sale of the home. For example, chattels may include fridges, stoves, microwaves, washers, dryers, or window coverings. The contract of purchase and sale should specify which of these items are included. If the buyer or the seller wants particular items to be included or excluded as part of the purchase and sale, it is important that they specifically list them in the contract. Viewed. This section provides a reference date for when the buyer viewed the condition of the property. The seller agrees that when the property is transferred, it will be substantially in the same condition as on the date viewed. Title The contract of purchase and sale requires the seller to transfer the title, or ownership, of the property to the buyer. It also provides that the title will be clear of all encumbrances except for those listed in the agreement. As part of a buyer's due diligence, the property's title is reviewed to ensure that the seller is the owner of the property and to see if there are any charges, such as a mortgage, registered against it. It is important to understand that while the title search lists the registered charges that affect the title to the property, it does not provide the terms of any charges. Therefore, in addition to having a title search, a buyer should consider obtaining complete copies of registered charges and legal advice to ensure they understand the implications of them. Risk. This section provides that the seller will remain responsible for all risks relating to the property and all other items included in the purchase and sale until 12.01 a.m. on the completion date. The buyer should ensure they have property insurance from and after that time to make sure they are protected. The seller may want to consider also insuring the property through to possession. Restriction on Assignment of Contract the contract of purchase and sale provides that the contract cannot be assigned without the written consent of the seller and that any profit from an assignment will be for the benefit of the seller unless otherwise agreed to by the buyer and the seller. Agency Disclosure In this section, both the seller and the buyer's designated agents and the respective brokerages, if any, are specified. The buyer and the seller initial the appropriate boxes to acknowledge receipt of the appropriate agency disclosure forms. Sometimes, one of the parties is represented and the other is not represented. In this case, the realtor who represents a client in the transaction is required to provide the unrepresented party the appropriate disclosure form to explain the risks of not being represented. 
the unrepresented party initials the appropriate box of the contract of purchase and sale to acknowledge that there is no agency relationship and that appropriate disclosure has been made to them. If neither party is represented by a realtor, then this section would typically not be completed. Offer The offer or counteroffer will be open until a specified date for acceptance. Once an offer or counteroffer is accepted by both parties, a legally binding contract is formed. In some cases, the contract may contain conditions for the benefit of a party that must be satisfied or waived by that party before they are obligated to complete the transaction. In those cases, that party is obligated to act honestly and in good faith with respect to satisfying those conditions. This section also contains the buyer's declaration as to whether or not they are a Canadian citizen or permanent resident as defined under the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. This information will be important for determining whether certain taxes might be payable by the buyer when completing the sale. Acceptance this section is where the seller signs to acknowledge their acceptance of the terms of the contract. If there is a counteroffer made by the seller, a binding agreement will not be formed unless the buyer accepts the new terms proposed by the seller. The contract should specify the date when an offer or counteroffer is accepted, as it confirms the date that the deal is agreed to by both parties. This date is often used as a reference for any terms that may be determined based on the date of acceptance. For example, the date and time that the deposit becomes due. In this section, the seller must also specify their residency status under the Income Tax Act by initialing the appropriate box. Residency status information is important for determining whether certain withholdings and remittances need to be made by the buyer on closing if the seller is a non-resident of Canada. With such a significant financial commitment, it's important to ensure that everything is fully understood and laid out before signing the contract of purchase and sale. If you have any additional questions about the contract of purchase and sale, contact your realtor. Realtors are here to help.